BioBalance HealthCast episode 213, Dr. Maupin's approach to treating hormone deficiency. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Dr. Kathy Maupin and I are going to be talking today about uh, extensions from the most recent podcast that we did, uh, which was about the way medical perspective is changing to look more globally at the life and lifestyle of a patient and how what the processes are in looking at those things to say, what's wrong in your life? What's wrong physically, emotionally? How are those things connected? Uh, what treatments are available and which ones will help you now and which ones do you not need now? And that's part of the art. Uh, yeah, it is part of the art. As opposed to the medicine. science of medicine. Uh, because practicing medicine is both an art and a science. It's not just test tubes and, and lab tests and here's an end result, give you three cc's of that. Uh, it, it needs the human interface, mm -hmm. the knowledge, the experience, and... and and how, do you, how you look at uh, a intuition patient. of a doctor. Mm -hmm. I mean, all, all of those the things observational that, that communicate. Skills. So what we thought we'd do today is spend a little bit of time talking about the kind of messages uh, that that Kathy's new patients bring to the office from their physicians who may or may not know about what you do and support it, <laughs> uh, and how she works through that, how she responds to that, uh, the, the messages that she gives to different patients, and how she decides, you know what, you need this, but you don't need that, so I'm not going to do this, but I'll do that, or you don't need anything from what I do, come back in a year, come back in two years. Mm -hmm. So so let's and talk about And people don't that. believe I do people that. People don't believe you do that, but we were talking off camera, and at least three different subsets of this concept have presented themselves to you this week in they your have. office. I mean, one I, one I is a, a man that came in, uh, and, and people fill out, go to the website if you're interested. And people come from all over the world. So if you say, oh, there's no doctors here where I am that do what Dr. Maupin does, get on a plane. Planes come to St. Louis every single day. <laughs> and people do come from Canada, from Germany, from England, Australia, from all over the United States, from Australia. Japan. <laughs> uh, or another possibility, because Kathy trains physicians in the art and science of what she does so that they can do it in your locality, send your doctor. Have them get in touch with us. And Make sure your doctor is very out-of-the-box thinker and a really problem good solver. problem solver because right. because people who just want to do uh, A, B, C, D, E, it doesn't, right. that's not what I train people to do. I train so, people to do that. So if you've read our book, The Secret Female Hormone, there are checklists in there that, that you look at to see what your symptomology and stuff might be. And if you decide, you know what, I'm, <clears throat> I'm interested in learning more about this, I want to do this, you go to Kathy's website, biobalancehealth.com, and you fill out the new patient application forms, and they send you a prescription to get your blood test drawn. And there's a whole bank of tests that she wants to have drawn that you send or bring uh, or send before we, you come. Yeah, we get them ahead of time. You get them ahead of time. So I she, look at them. Uh, before, you take that. I look at them before. Right. You ever pay, meet the patient. I have a stack of, of uh, lab sheets and right. history forms to put together. I look at the forms and I see who really is a candidate for this, who I can help, who I can't help. And then if I can't help them, then maybe I... Could help them next year maybe maybe it's not something that and so you make a preliminary judgment right. based on that set of data mm -hmm. but then the patient comes in and you sit down and you look at them physically mm -hmm. and you talk to them about their history and not and all of the patients do i bring in exactly I, in fact Some, one of the patients yeah. that came in this week i told her you look excellent on paper and you don't have any symptoms i don't think you should come in right and she said well i want to come in and she flew from canada yeah so we had a nice hour-long discussion about what she should come in for, what she shouldn't, what she can do as preventive. I mean, it was it was excellent, but it wasn't diagnostic treatment. It was more preventive medicine. Right. Um, you also had a man come in this week who had filled out the paperwork and taken the blood test and so on and was talking to his cardiologist about being in the process of doing this mm -hmm. and his cardiologist was very dismissive and very skeptical <laughs> about what you do and he says well you don't need all of those blood tests mm -hmm. to to see if he has enough tests no he said you don't need those blood tests well, he just said you don't need it. i mean the patient said just patient, yeah. just like just like 
I would expect this guy to say, you don't need this test. There's nothing. She, she's just ordering tests to order tests. And so your response to him was what? My response was, your cardiologist has no idea how I'm interpreting this and why I'm interpreting these tests. And I'm going to show you one by one exactly why I do the tests mm -hmm. and why it is very important to what I'm doing. There's three classifications of the, uh, of the lab tests. One is I need to know how healthy a patient is because basically I need to know you can clear your, your through your liver and kidneys, you can clear out the right. hormones I give you. But I also need to know what, what lipids, what lipids you, um, levels you have because testosterone lowers cholesterol. So I'd like to know where we start. If you have high cholesterol. If you have high cholesterol. Yeah. And I'd like to know, uh, and usually it improves the profile. So basically if I'm treating with testosterone, I want to do a before and after. Mm -hmm. But I also want to see who's at risk for heart disease by looking at both the inflammatory uh, profile, the CRP, and the lipids, and the, the homo, uh, homocysteine level. All three things determine heart disease, and cardiologists don't do the homocysteine level yet. I just read something about HS-CRP. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. I know. HS-CRP is, is a uh, blood test to see if you have global inflammation. Biomarkers. It's a biomarker. For inflammation. Right. And if you have inflammation on, on that CRP test, you have inflammation in your vessels. And if you have inflammation in your vessels, it pulls the cholesterol out of your blood and it makes plaque, which is what we're trying to avoid. So inflammation plus lipids plus homocysteine makes plaque. So we want all of those to be normal. Now, homocysteine's easy. You just take methyl B vitamins, not regular B vitamins, but methylated B vitamins, right. and that clears up the homocysteine. homocysteine. Inflammation's a little trickier, and oftentimes I can just reverse it with replacing hormones so, or weight so loss. Part of the aging process, as you age and your body begins to have malfunctions systemically, mm -hmm. your hearing goes, your vision goes, your balance goes, your the digestion goes, goes, your bowels Blood clog up, goes up, all that stuff starts to happen. Part of what the body's response to that is, is inflammation. Right. And the more inflammation you have, the more it pulls cholesterol into the bloodstreams. And so your, your veins and arteries clog and the uh, your blood pressure goes up because the heart has to work harder to push blood through. And your vessels don't dilate when they need to. Most vessels or arteries are supposed to dilate when you need to send more blood, but they become stiff. And so that's a natural process of aging for most people. So doctors natural, now... but not healthy. Natural, but not healthy. Mm -hmm. So doctors now uh, look for this biomarker, the, mm -hmm. the HSCRP, mm -hmm. to determine the amount of inflammation and make a, an extrapolation into the amount of congestion and plaque in the vessels. Right. Because the higher that is, the more likely that you're going to have a stroke or a heart attack. So you're going to collect enough goo on the inside of your vessels that the vessels will be small and part of the plaque will break off and you'll send a thrombus to your brain or to your heart, block a vessel. So yes, but it's it's a predictor too. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean if your HSCRP is elevated that you have that. It means that it's a prediction of future heart disease. Your body's working in that direction. Right. So let's reverse it. Right. And so two of the things that the happen methyl, with aging. Vitamin B. That's for the homocysteine. Right. Homocysteine. So what, what pulls the cholesterol out? Um, homocysteine actually pulls the cholesterol out and makes plaque even without inflammation. Okay. Believe it or not. So homocysteine is the third piece. Right. It's like, I always say, it's like that marathoner that you know who always says, my cholesterol is low and my inflammation is low and I'm skinny and I'm running every day and they die. On the, while they're running, well, that's usually, it could be an arrhythmia, but it's usually homocysteine was high and they still made plaque. Yeah. But they thought they were bulletproof because of these other things. That's that third factor. So now we know that, but most cardiologists aren't ordering it yet, believe it or not. Wow. It's been in their journals. It's been in the journals of endocrinology. It's very important. Uh -huh. The deal is, they don't, what they don't like about it is it can change day by day. I've t tested some people. It's elevated. And then I say, well, on this date of your blood test, were you sick? Did you have a sinus infection? You can have a tooth infection and have an elevated HSCRP. So you have to ask them some questions right. 
to make sure they were well when they had their blood drawn. Right? The same so, thing with a PSA test. Yeah. I mean, there are rules for taking a PSA test that no one most knows. of us don't know. The doctors don't tell us. Like mm -hmm. not having sex for 24 hours before. 48. 48 hours. You always See? want to make it shorter. I always want to make it shorter. <laughs> There's an ulterior motive for yeah. that. 48 uh, hours before not yeah. having a prostate exam right before your PSA. That guarantees, if you have a prostate exam before a PSA, that guarantees it'll be high. Because that... If somebody's massaging that thing, it swells up. <laughs> it releases PSA. <laughs> it releases PSA. In any case, the so the first step in a PSA, you know, right. they go, oh, it's high. Well, they should tell you the... the parameters and make sure you did that and if you didn't do that take it again so usually so it should be early be in the morning it should be fasting it mm -hmm. should be 48 hours removed from sex mm -hmm. or any kind of manipulation or any process. kind of manipulation so but those, they don't tell you that they just say i do fasting. i have a little i have a little piece of paper on all of my recs that say yeah. that's the case okay i mean you got to read it obviously when we send out blood I work it says <laughs> You have to read what we send. Yeah. So, okay, let me go back to the labs because that's right. kind of important. So, so some of my tests are, are you healthy and what's your baseline? Some of the tests are, what's the level of your hormone right now? Where yeah. are you in all of your hormones? I test every hormone that is a, a major hormone in the body. And then I test things that testosterone could make worse, like... It, help, it helps people absorb more iron, but if they have too much iron in their body or they have hemochromatosis or they have a very high iron level, right. genetically, they absorb iron, that can cause you to be very sick. And if I make it worse, I don't want to make it worse. So you were telling me there are actually people whose bodies have so much iron in their blood that they have to donate blood regularly to drain off the excess iron. Right, and it's a genetic thing. It's usually Northern Europeans. It's usually it's the right. King's disease. You know, they used to bleed the kings and put leeches on them. I thought it was hemophilia. No, well, that was the other one. Okay, they're Dif both blood king. diseases, different yeah. king. Right, but this is the one where they always had to like cut. You know, they would always like cut. The, yeah, and bleed the king. And, yeah, and bleed the king because it was in those families that were the <laughs> it's kings. It's time to bleed the king. <laughs> that's right. I mean, <laughs> but but that's how we treat it. Is is if you have hemochromatosis. You have usually have too much blood, or excuse me, too much iron stored in your tissues, not just in your blood. Right. So it's not just where we need it for for our red cells. It's in our brain. It's in our liver. So it's that in like our a heavy heart. Metal? It's it acts like a heavy metal in those patients, okay. and so that can make you mentally ill, which is why they did that. The kings of England acted. Oh, I thought it was all inbreeding. That's right. Well, it's inbreeding because they got their, everybody in that, England got so this genetics. See, and I, as it is person inbreeding. That studied history and anthropology and sociology, I learned all about that. And you're looking at the medical pieces, which are the subsets of why that is. Why the way that it is. is the case? That's yeah. true. So, yeah. so in in St. Louis, that's where we are. We have a, a propensity of Northern Europeans, even though a lot of ex kings run around St. Louis County. Seriously, there's a lot of of a Great Britain right here. There's a lot of Germany right here. There's a lot of Northern France right, right here. So we do have our pockets of uh, Southern Europeans, but in general, our blood type's A. I mean, not mine, but I mean, the blood type of St. Louis is A, which is Northern European. So if you had a South, the blood type of the United States is O. Yeah. That's a, and the world is O. But but here we have Northern Europeans, and hemochromatosis is a big deal. Yeah. So it's usually in men, it because women have periods and they get rid of blood throughout their lives. But when they stop having periods, women can they, get it too. Yeah. So in any case, I look at ferritin. So you know, the, of course, the cardiologist thought that was crazy. But ferritin is how you diagnose this this disease and I'm looking at things that I don't want to make worse and I'm also ruling out um, things like a brain tumor in your pituitary can cause you to have the same symptoms as low testosterone from aging so I have to rule that out so he looks he looks at it and he doesn't understand why I'm doing this because he has not he doesn't know what testosterone does and he, he doesn't think that I'm t I'm treating the whole person. I'm trying to so treat you don't the come, whole person. So you don't person. come in in the morning and say, oh, goody, I'm going to sell 500 more units of testosterone today. No, that's not what I do. That's not at all what I do. I know that, but I want everybody but else to hear that. But that's, because some doctors think that's what you're doing. And tell their patients that's, that's all she's doing. That's ridiculous. 
No, I, I come in every day and I yeah. have the best life because half of my patients are returning after their first dose. Right. And the other half are new and I'm starting them. But the half that are returning are like, oh, my husband's going to send you flowers. He's so happy and I feel so good. And yesterday I had somebody come in who had been with me for um, a year. She'd lost 35 pounds. She looked, I have a pre-picture and a post-picture. She looked like her own youngest sister or her, I mean, she looked like an entirely different person. She's beautiful. Yeah. She told me she had to get a whole new wardrobe, which big deal. Yeah. If you lose 35 Happily. pounds Happily. and you're only five, three, you know how most that's of us have, huge. In our, in our closets, we have fat clothes and skinny clothes because we go up and down and we have to keep both. So she probably doesn't mind. No, she didn't. She didn't mind. And she looks beautiful. And so she was, she was in. So that's an awesome feeling. I mean, it has nothing to do with, Sales, you have to, you have to re, be reimbursed for what you're doing, but but this is awesome, right? And it, yeah. it you is, change and save lives. I, yeah, day. I mean, and oh, so what? They're not twenty, big deal. They feel like they're thirty. Another person told me, another woman told me, I feel like I'm thirty five again. I mean, I literally feel thirty five. Yeah, and she was fifty eight. Wow. So that's, I mean. That's amazing. And they feel it most at the very beginning because it's so different than they felt last month or two months ago. Right. right. Then they're normal resets. They're normal resets. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, oh, yeah, this is great. Yeah. but Or after a while, they're like, uh, I put on 10 pounds and this testosterone stuff is not working because, you know, because they quit tracking their diet and paying they quit attention. quit working and, out and started drinking a lot. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's But then common. you whip out the old photo yeah. and the old lab results and you say, let's talk about what you were like when you came in here because we forget. I have to go over the symptoms. Now, tell me about the symptoms. Right. You had these symptoms. Is that happening anymore? Yeah. Do you have no. any of those? Do you have migraines? Do you have, you know, uh, no, no, I forgot I had that. Do you have aches all over? Do you have joint no, aches? No, but they'll, no. Say, they'll say, no, but I quit drinking Mountain Dew, you know, and so that's why I'm better. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's Because <laughs> I told you to quit drinking Mountain Dew all day long and no more sugared soda. Right. But, but basically, they've... They've forgotten right. why it got better, but that's okay. I mean, all it takes is not taking the next dose yeah. and going back down to your old baseline to realize, or being late on your dose, to realize how much it meant to you. So that's, I don't have to worry about that. So, and I'm not making people live forever. I've no. been accused of making people live forever. I'm making people live a quality of life while they can but, and not be sick. But there's a range of things that you do. The primary yeah. thing that you're known for is replacement of hormones. But if somebody's not an appropriate candidate, mm -hmm. you don't replace their hormones. Like this gal that flew in from mm -hmm. Canada that had the consultation. Mm -hmm. um, she was beautiful did, and looked younger than she was. Am I remembering the right story? Did you give her a Remedex? No, I didn't give her you anything. You didn't give her anything. She okay. didn't need a thing. I mean... Looking at her, I could, I can almost tell now. Like looking at people, she was a perfect weight. She was a, she, she, she had beautiful blood flow to her skin. She, I mean, she was just perfect, and her labs were really good. And so that's why I said I don't think I need to see you because yeah. I think you're well. Yeah. well. She just wanted to know what was going to happen next. So I'll see them if they want to. Right. But I would never bring somebody in and say talk to you, you know, pay me, and no, I'm not going to give you the pellets. Right. I'm not going to give you your hormones, or I'm not going to fix something. Right. But, so I'm trying to weed out people who don't need me. But you did have a, a patient. Yes, we I talked had about a male a previous patient. podcast who, who came in and said, I want this, and you looked at him and said, no, there's something wrong with your blood test. Right. There's something wrong with your blood count. Go back to your doctor and have him look into it. Mm -hmm. And the doctor looked at it and said, no, there's nothing wrong. So he came back and said, here I am again. I want this. Take because care of Because I've this. got these symptoms. And, you and said, I said, no. Nope. I will not do this <laughs> until you get whatever's wrong he with your He had a very blood. high ferritin and he had a very high blood count. So he went back a second time. And then and this time you told him, go past your regular doctor. Go see a specialist. Hematologist. So he did. And what was the outcome? And he had a genetic disease that causes people to, it wasn't hemochromatosis, right. but it was a different genetic disease, very rare, and it causes you to have too much iron in your body, but it also causes sudden death before you're 50. And he had had that in his family history. Wow. And he was 52. So his hematologist said, holy moly. <laughs> Literal quote. <laughs> holy moly, you, yeah. are, you would not be here he said, and you probably would have had sudden death over the next 
you know, year. So he, he actually had to take off six units of blood, I believe. Wow. And six units of blood to get his blood count where it should be. And then that was all the treatment was. But it was a yeah. different illness than hemochromatosis. And he said, as long as you keep your blood count down, then go get your testosterone. Have fun. Basically, he said, it'll bring your blood count back up, but we're going to keep taking blood off. So it doesn't do any harm, and you need to have your hormones back to be well. And, and I know this story because my wife works part-time in Kathy's office, and she came home one day, and she said, this crazy man came into the office <laughs> and was shouting he down was, the he, hall. She didn't say crazy. He was, was adorable. My, okay. <laughs> but she said he was shouting down the hallway to Kathy with the room full of waiting patients and people going in and out of treatment rooms and so on. You saved my life. And, and I just thought he Kathy meant. Kathy was dismissive, like thinking his, he meant, his sex I got my life sex was life better, back, you know. so I'm happy. And he said, no, no, stop, stop, listen to me. You saved my life. And then he told you what the hematologist had told right. him. Right. You know, he was at the front desk. I was just standing at the front desk. He's telling me the whole story in front right. of everybody. And yeah. so there's no secret to this. Yeah. He was so happy right he was so happy and so he came in to tell us that and he came in to make his appointment right and so so Kathy, i don't just do this other stuff. dr moppin treats approaches medicine this way which is a combination of new age approach of of perspective and balance and and glo global information mm -hmm. and an old style approach of knowing your patient and having a relationship with them and spending time with them an hour not yeah. seven minutes right it's the uh, most fun i've ever had in medicine it's the most fun i've ever because i can I have the time to get to know somebody and get to understand their situation and, and see their lives change and see their lives change drastically absolutely so, so so dr moppin does this there are other doctors who do similar things around the country you can find that information on her website, biobalancedhealth.com. Health .com. You can read our book, The Secret Female Hormone. You can get on a plane and come to St. Louis, <laughs> or you can send your doctors here for training. She operates a training program to teach other doctors who want to practice medicine from the perspective that you practice medicine, how to do that in, and survive in this medical age. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.